I'm cosplaying as my favorite tire company's mascot, the Michelin Man, because it's seven degrees Celsius outside right now. But it's also perfect weather and perfect conditions to test out the off-road capability of a Nissan Pathfinder. Now, why would I bother with that? One, it comes with terrain modes. Two, it has a four by four badge on the back, so it must be good at off-roading. And three, this thing is pretty similar in price to an entry-level Nissan Patrol. So that's why I brought it out here on the dirt, because this is something you might want to invest in if you're looking at driving it a little bit off-road, maybe going to your favorite farm, maybe going to your favorite winery, or maybe your favorite campground. Now this car also has stiff competition from behind a Palisade, which is an excellent big SUV that this thing has to compete against. So let's find out together if it's worth spending nearly $90,000 on Nissan's most luxurious, biggest road-going SUV. And no, I didn't stutter. This particular Pathfinder is the TIL model, which means it's gonna cost you nearly $90,000 drive away here in New South Wales, which is a lot of money. But are you getting a lot of value? Well, let's find out what features we're getting first. First of all, we are getting these LED lights. I really like the new look of the Pathfinder. It's really grown up and looks so much better than the previous generation. And I also like this blacked out badge. I also do like the fact you got your Nissan logo here, but you do have your radar systems down here in a rectangle. You don't have that new Nissan logo that hides all the radar like you'll see in something like the Nissan Nissan X-Trail. Nissan still loves the chrome, so we're getting plenty of chrome here on the front, but I do like this plastic molding down here, which looks a bit more rugged, and of course you have your LED fog lamps down there as well. Now I've got to talk about the design for a second. This thing looks really nice in proportion. It doesn't look like a blown up X-Trail, and that's something I really appreciate about the Pathfinder. It looks like a nice big grown up SUV and nothing that sort of has awkward proportions like the previous generation Pathfinder. We're also getting 20 inch wheels wrapped in a Hankook rubber, which are definitely more road focused. They're definitely not off-road tires. You're getting plastic wheel arches, which sort of give you more of an off-road feel and look. You're getting more chrome down there as well with Pathfinder stamped in there. There's heaps of Pathfinder badges around this car. You're getting keyless entry locking as well but there's no buttons it's a sensor which i really quite like this side mirror here also has a camera on the side you're going to have a 360 degree parking camera system on this which is quite useful we're getting this black trim around the windows with a bit of chrome as well which i like quite a lot and up the back way towards the back which is more of like a signature pathfinder look is that you have your roof rails instead of them being extended all the way to the front they're sort of pushed towards the back because this roof is so long now nissan doesn't want you to mistake this for any other nissan model that's why they've spent money on putting 10 letters on the the back to spell out Pathfinder, which is pretty spectacular, but I don't mind the look. I like the statement piece quite a lot. And you also do have this four wheel drive badge down here, even though this is not a four wheel drive, it's an all wheel drive car, but that's what Nissan calls the all wheel drive system for this car here. Now there's more plastic moldings down here, but there's no fake exhaust pipes, which I like quite a lot. So it is a pretty clean looking exterior, which I'm really liking with Nissan's new generation of cars. Now the automatic tailgate of the Nissan Pathfinder is pretty large. So be careful how close you park it to like another car or a wall because it opens just a bit further than you might anticipate. Now you have over 500 liters of boot space back here with all the third row folded flat. You've also got a little 12 volt socket here as well to charge anything you might need. And also some little bag hooks, which proved to be a bit useful and some little clips to hold the seat belts here in the back out of the way, which I can appreciate to be a nice little touch there. Now you have this false floor here, which holds in place thanks to some nice hinges. And you have a big plastic bucket here to put anything you don't want rolling around in the boot down in here. Now this might be good for say like hiking boots or anything that might be dirty, you want on this carpet can go right in there. Now, if you're talking about where the heck is that spare tire, it's tucked in underneath this and there is a removable little section here which you can pop off just like that. And it's gonna show you where your jack stands are and everything you need to change your tire. Now, folding the third row down is pretty easy. There's these little tabs here, which folds down. They fold in a 60-40 split. And then also, if you wanna bring it back up, they have some little loops here, which sort of Velcro onto the back to stay out of the way. But something I will label as pretty annoying and feels a little lazy is there's nothing in the back here to fold that second row down with ease. There's no buttons or levers. You have to go around to the side doors to do that where something like the Palisade does that with some buttons in the back. Although when you need to fold down the second row, they fold down with ease thanks to a lever. So look, I complain about no buttons in the back, but it is really simple just to fold these flat. Now as a five foot 11 adult, I can step in the back here with ease. And once I'm in, I just fold this headrest up and you're gonna to have to get someone to close that door for you, but you can reach forward and close it if you must. Now I can just pull the seat back towards me and 
get locked in here in the third row. Now, funny and a bit cramped back here. Any sort of adjustment uh, you can make, and you can get nice and reclined, as you can see, compared to this second row. Now, I have my own little USB charging ports here in the back, which is a USB Type A port. I have my own cup holders. I have a nice large window here in the back, my own air vents, and I shouldn't feel too claustrophobic in the back. And I won't miss out on any sort of media because I have my own speaker right next to my arm here as well. Now, you can set where you want this second row to sort of slide to, so you can make more room for yourself. My big boots do just sort of fit underneath the seat in front of me. My head is touching the roof here close to and then also this seat belt's really annoying just sort of hovering above my head so that's kind of annoying just to have that floating there I'd rather have it incorporated into the seat now this middle seat here in the back is pretty rough I wouldn't recommend sitting in it unless you're actually a child so look adults should be able to fit comfortably back here if they're around 5 foot 11 maybe max 6 foot 2 but then any taller than that you're really going to be asking too much of them and they have to take the second row but it means that you can put some adults here in the third row and you can take them for a little bit longer of a trip than you would say some other seven seat SUVs which are nearly impossible to feel comfortable in for long trips and it's easy enough just to launch the seat forward like that with the press of a button. But this is the main reason why you're looking at buying this top spec Nissan Pathfinder. Because here in the second row you have captain's chairs. And if you know anything about captain's chairs, you know they're the most luxurious way to get around in any SUV. You have your own space, your own armrests, and you also just feel like you're in your own part of the cabin compared to having to share a middle seat with the other person. Now here in the middle we have our own cup holders, which are very nice to have. We've also got a very large storage bin as well, so you're just going to be able to put all your things here in the middle. And if you need to charge items in the back, you have a USB Type-C and USB Type-A port right there in the middle. We also all have our own climate controls as well, which is really useful. So you can adjust temperature here in the third row, the fan speed, and also adjust our heated seats. Now what's cool is that we're actually sitting higher up compared to the front row, so we actually get like a view out of the cabin above who's sitting in the front seats, which is really quite cool. We also get to take full advantage of this big glass sunroof, and also we do have our own blinds in the back, as you can see, to block out any haters. Now I won't lie and say this is where I'd rather be spending all my time, and look, driving this thing, yeah, sure, that's fine, but sitting right here, this is the best seat in the house by far. There's plenty of feet room, plenty of headroom for a five foot 11 adult, just like me. And then I just feel very comfortable and I feel like I could just almost take a nap on a long trip. Now these seats do recline pretty well. That's as far as they recline. This is how much leg room you're gonna be able to get in terms of max leg room, which is pretty good as well. But you will be able to move them forwards to adjust and accommodate people in the third row. But I don't know why you'd wanna do that because you're just going to have to make them put up with you being very comfortable here in the second row. Now jumping into the front row, you are going to experience a lot of big upgrades compared to the previous generation Pathfinder and even compared to something like the more expensive Nissan Patrol. So closing that door, pressing the start button here, I like the location as well, everything comes alive. I really like the animations and also the display here for the driver. We have a heads-up display, but we do have a smaller center screen that we do on something like the Nissan X-Trail or the new Qashqai. Now we have our physical HVAC controls, we have physical buttons for the infotainment, we have pretty nice materials used all throughout the cabin, although there is a sense of plasticness that sort of just comes through the through like these tougher sort of bits of trim and also just bits and pieces on this synthetic leather. So so yeah, there's just not a edge over the Palisade, which uses some really premium materials like the suede headliner that it uses compared to the Pathfinder. So the Pathfinder does feel like it sits just below the Palisade in terms of overall build quality and finish. But it certainly does feel a bit more rugged in here. Now there is a Pathfinder logo stamped in the rubber here in this little sort of storage shelf above the glove box and another Pathfinder logo here on the actual center console. So Nissan wants to remember this is a Nissan Pathfinder. If you forget as well, when you step into the car, the door sills read Pathfinder as well. Now here in the center console, we have a deep amount of cubby space, which is very useful. We also have some storage space under here on this floating console. We've also got plenty of little buckets here and cup holders. We have a large little wireless charging pad with more USB Type-C and USB Type-A charging ports and a 12 volt socket. We have a decent sized glove box, but most of the space is taken up by this chunky driver's manual. But these seats are really comfortable. I really like how they're finished. I feel really well held in. And for a long trip, I felt very comfortable. They're also heated and cooled. So that's an edge over the people in the second row who only get heated seats. So this rear view mirror also has a little party trick. If you go to flick this little toggle, which would normally allow you to put it into the auto dim setting, instead it turns it into a camera. So you can load this car right up to the roof with people and cargo and all that 
necessary stuff and still see through it thanks to the camera being located on the outside of the car and you can see a perfect view day and night through this little camera screen which is like something you'd see on a Land Rover product which I really like quite a lot. Now the shifter design here is something I'm a big fan of as well. It's really simple to operate and I really like the look and feel of it as well. We also have a terrain modes here and I do like the restraint of the use of gloss black plastics but there is some around the HVAC controls and also the screen bezels and all that but mostly it's sort of tucked out of the way that it shouldn't show too much dust or fingerprints which is pretty good. And to top it all off you do get electronic adjustment for your steering column here which is really quite good and you can also set it to a memory setting so it makes it really easy to swap drivers out of this this car and something that's just a bit nicer than a manual adjustment. Now the only annoying thing about this car having this style of shifter is you can't shift manually from it. Instead you have to use these paddles and I just wish these paddles were removed like Land Rover products instead just relying here on the shifter to change your own gear. Something small but I just feel like that sort of just takes away feeling this sort of cheaper plastic on this sort of nicer finished interior. Now there is one little quality thing that was sort of annoying me this whole time I was reviewing this car is that part of the trim here underneath the windshield is sort of popping up compared to the other side. Something I'd be very disappointed in if I had spent nearly $90,000 on this car. And these Bose speakers, they look good and they sound pretty decent, but I did find that you can't really exploit the bass in this car because it feels really rattly. It starts to rattle even on some mild bass and even when it's all centered and it should be no rattles at all, it does sort of offer a bit of rattle through this car speaker system, which I just found very poor for a car that's going to cost you $90,000. And if your kids are being annoying with your climate controls in the back, you can actually just take control with an easy press of a button and either turn it off or actually just take control of the rear entirely so you won't have any fights with people who are trying to set two different temperatures. Now this car definitely does feel like it's better built than the X-Trail. I feel like it does feel like a step above that. Everything feels a bit more tight and heavy. Oh, and also what's cool is that this screen also gets wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is so useful. I really appreciate that and just makes it so easy to jump in and out of this car. Awesome, great, something that's better than the Hyundai Palisade, which doesn't have that. But let's see if it actually drives better than a Hyundai Palisade and also is it actually that much better than a Nissan X-Trail if you don't need the extra seats? And is it more capable on the road compared to something like the big behemoth that is the Nissan Patrol? Now, the Pathfinder has a lot of similarities to early SUVs. It has a big displacement V6. It's petrol only. There's no fancy turbocharging, supercharging, or any hybrid technology here. It's sending power to an all-wheel drive system via a more modern nine-speed automatic. So all you CVT haters can rejoice. This thing is heavy, it's around two ton, it's got a lot of space, it's got a huge wheelbase, and it has an okay amount of power. So you're looking at just under 300 horsepower, or just over 200 kilowatts for what this motor produces in terms of power, and then you've also got just under 400 newton meters of torque. Now if you've ever watched The Sopranos, you'll know that AJ, the son of Tony Soprano, gets a big brutish Nissan SUV as a gift and that is exactly what this Pathfinder reminds me of. It is a very comfortable, very relaxing, it feels very safe as well thanks to that heavier build quality throughout the, this car. It definitely does feel like it's better built than the X-Trail but it is of course more expensive. And it feels far more of a statement SUV than it does the smaller SUVs that Nissan offers. And of course, if you want the ultimate Nissan SUV, you gotta go buy the Patrol. But if you want more road oriented comfort and you don't really want a big brutish V8 and you also want something like Apple CarPlay, then you'd have to go into something like this. Now as for the road noise in this car, it's pretty much at a minimum. It's really quite nice in here and very luxurious. Now, something that isn't luxurious is the Bose speaker system. I thought it was gonna be really good, but I experienced a fair amount of bass rattle which is something I really would not want to experience at all in the slightest in a car that costs nearly $90,000 drive away. Now the steering is about as vague as you'd probably expect it to be. It's not super precise, but that's not the game of this SUV. It is a pretty relaxing drive. Now these seats are nice and comfortable as well, and you also do have this power adjustable steering column so you can get nice and comfortable really easily. Now the digital driver's display and heads-up display is a great combination, really easy to read, and you can get all your information at a glance. Really like that quite a lot. And this 9-speed automatic does a pretty good job being in the right gear all the time. You hardly notice any shifts, but you will occasionally feel them. It's not completely flawless, but it does a really good job of sort of sliding up and down the rev range. And I was sort of a bit curious if it was a CVT at first when I first drove this thing, because I like to go into driving this thing blind before I read the spec sheets. And it does a really good job of just being nice and smooth uh, when it's trying to find the right gear. It doesn't sort of buckle and jump around the rev range. Now I really don't deviate from normal mode in this car. It's a standard mode, but you've also got eco and you have sport mode if you want to squeeze all 
of that 270 horsepower out of this petrol V6. Now I will say this petrol V6 is pretty brisk. You can put your foot down and it will just start to get moving, but it's nothing that's gonna really surprise you. The all-wheel drive system is an all-wheel drive system. It's not a four x four diff locking system. Um, this car does advertise it has four x four, but it's really just a fancy all-wheel drive system. Now, the biggest downside of buying this SUV would be the fuel consumption. You're, I'm looking at 12.1 liters per 100 Ks on average with a mix of highway and urban driving. And look, that's just something that you're gonna have to get used to if you do want a petrol V6 with an all-wheel drive system. Now, competitors like the Hyundai Palisade diesel get five better figures and that's because you've got a smaller four-cylinder turbocharged diesel motor which is going to be more efficient but if you want v6 petrol power or you don't want a diesel for whatever reason then that's the price you got to pay so when you go to floor this car you get the reminiscent sound of Nissan's VQ motor because if you know anything about Nissan's VQ motor, it's a very popular engine they use throughout all their cars and their sports cars, but it's known for being uh, a little bit annoying once you put an exhaust on it. It sounds a bit trombone-like, but since this is a big SUV, it's not gonna sound anything like that until you really dig down and you can hear that engine just give you a hint of what this thing sounds like when you put an exhaust on it. Now, a big advantage over the Hyundai Palisade is the fact that this car does have safety controls, but they're not too nagging. So the thing I'm talking about is the adaptive speed recognition, which in the Palisade is the biggest annoyance I have with that car, is where every time you step in, it resets, and it means it wants to read all the speed signs and then tell you if you're speeding, even though something like a school zone might not be active. It might think you're speeding through a school zone, even though it's not a school zone at that time. And even out on the highway, if you're passing a speed sign that's for an exit and not your speed on the highway, it might pick up that and start to ding at you saying, hey, you're speeding, even though you're not. So at least here in the Pathfinder, you're not gonna have that issue, but it will read signs very accurately. So it, you shouldn't miss out on something as important as a school zone. Now we do have some off-road modes here. We have snow mode, so that is another way you might be using this all-wheel drive system. But um, yeah, we're not gonna find any snow today, even though it is seven degrees Celsius outside. Now we do have a mud and rut system which is for more aggressive bits of slippery surfaces and say if you're running through some actual slippery mud that might be a good section so if you're going to the local farmers market out at Orange for example that was a pretty muddy surface and a lot of cars got bogged down there so that's where you might want to use a mud and rut system and no this isn't a rock crawling mud and rut system that's something I've got to reiterate this isn't a serious off-roader this is meant to be something that can tackle just the light stuff and something that might phase some other just front-wheel drive only or less off-road focus all-wheel drive cars. But what we're on right now is sand. It is a sandy surface and driving through here it should just do just fine. Um, there's plenty of all-wheel drive and even front-wheel drive cars that could do this section of road but it's a good test to see how stable a big SUV is across a surface like this. Now those larger wheels definitely do translate a lot of bumps through this car and the suspension is more of a road setup so this is going to phase it just a tiny bit and the whole car is going to shake and rattle around more than it would say in this sand patrol. Now we do have a hill descent control button right here in the middle and it's very easy to activate. You just press that and then once you approach the top of a hill and you want to slowly go down it, you can just do that and it will take over. So say we go down this gentle slope here, we put on hill descent control and the car will detect that we are approaching a steep angle and adjust the speed accordingly automatically. Now that's probably only good if you're going down say a very steep slippery surface and you want the car to take over, that's a good button there. But really this car is just a very easy to use um, all wheel drive SUV. Okay, does a pretty good job just hooking up and you know using that all wheel drive system to create a bit of grip. Now let's go into sand mode and do that exact same test in three, two, one, and Now, I felt that sand mode just grip up a tiny bit more. There was a lot of wheel slip in that sport mode just because it was trying to push as much power to the rear to get us going as fast as possible, but here it just felt a bit more settled, a bit more predictable in that sand mode. So that's probably something you're gonna experience if you are wondering if these modes actually do change anything. Well, it's really just gonna tell the car what surface you're on and how to distribute the power accordingly. Now look, the Pathfinder is a really nice vehicle. It gives you the best of the old school type SUVs that used to exist with big displacement power and big brutish comfort and nice isolation from the outside world. 
And it is definitely easier to live with than the Nissan Patrol. So if you're looking to for a large Nissan SUV to live within the city, I'd be looking at the Pathfinder first, but if you need that extra off-road capability that the Patrol is so famous for, then you're obviously gonna pick that. Now, if you don't need the extra seating or space, I would say that the Nissan X-Trail is actually the better option to save your money on and give you similar off-road performance and all-wheel drive capability like this car offers. And finally, if you really want a diesel or hybrid option, you're gonna have to look elsewhere because this car only offers its power with a V6 petrol motor paired up to an all-wheel drive system. Now, Hyundai doesn't offer that with their Palisade, but they do offer a front-wheel drive version of a petrol motor, but if you don't care about what type of fuel your car drinks, then a diesel all-wheel drive option would be more fuel efficient and offer a bit more torque as well. And so that leaves me with, why would you consider this? Well, you like the look of it, one. You also like the space it offers and the luxurious appointments, and you've really enjoyed your time with your previous Pathfinder. That would make me consider jumping up into that. If I had enjoyed my Pathfinder, won something new and loved everything about it, but want everything else to be more modern, then this is your answer right here. And of course, if you care deeply about a V6 all-wheel drive setup and a big SUV, then here's an option here as well. But in saying that, it's luxurious, it's comfortable, it's also pretty capable on some slippery sections of dirt road as well. And something that is really easy to live with if you're looking for a sub $100,000 luxurious seven seat SUV that also can carry quite a lot of stuff with plenty of features to go along with it. So let me know if you would buy one of these. I really would love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments down below. Smash that subscribe button if you wanna see more large SUV reviews just like this. And make sure you also follow us on TikTok and Instagram so you don't miss out on any extra content we publish there using the handle at Product Review Cars. Now, if you like this review, leave a like. If you didn't like it, dislike it. My name is Cameron, and I'll see you in the next one.